going? Didn't we just go through this? Didn't we just go through this? You were crying in the back seat of my car? Remember that? Get off your bike. Get off your bike. Get off your bike. Get off. Come on. Come on. Hey, stop. Get over here. When is this country going to really deal with the fact that our policing system is broken? And it's not just broken because of policies. I'm tired of hearing people talk about you need a new policy or policies of a certain department is the reason we continue to see videos as traumatic as the one we just watched. For more than three minutes, we hear a kid screaming, screaming. It is never acceptable for a child to be handled in this manner. Stop, dude. This has nothing to do with culture and everything to do with culture. What I mean by that is we watch these officers behave in front of other people, not trying to hide their interactions with this eight year old at all as if it's normal. And it is normal. It is normal for us to be policed in this manner. And when I say us, I'm talking about black people. We are so comfortable with the trauma of black folk. We are so comfortable. We as a country are so comfortable with the long suffering of black people that you will see a press conference given by multiple white men bragging about how successful this officer was in this interaction with this child regardless of how you see black people an eight-year-old is a child child the officers that responded to this 911 complaint of a larceny in progress located the child who was stealing didn't handcuff him didn't arrest him didn't take him to jail we don't do that what they did do is call him by name and take him home to his father, then stand in the street and have a long discussion with him. Folks, this is Community Policing 101. This is Community Policing 101. They bragging because the officer did not put the child in handcuffs. You don't need handcuffs when you can grab a person by their hoodie and snatch them off their bicycle with no repercussions. To pretend that this child was behaving in a manner that deserved to be snatched up is absolutely disgusting. America's policing system does not need to be rewired. It needs to be unplugged. And as long as we are okay with a child being snatched off his bike in broad daylight, like by an officer. We are saying to black people that you will never be American. You will always be over-policed at all age ranges. Keep in mind, this was an eight-year-old taking something. Chips, hungry, probably, is what this child was guilty of. And for this child to be put in a car in such a manner, then taken home, and this officer was so brave in the worst sense that he stood out there and told this child after he just traumatized him that the next time he see him, they need to be friends. Nothing about the interaction was friendly. The aggressive nature in which he grabbed this child and held this child should not be acceptable for anyone. And the person who stood at the microphone and bragged that this child was not put in handcuffs and that this is community police in 101 needs a lesson in how we treat children. Oh, yeah, sir. I don't feel comfortable opening this door without my parents here, sir. Who, who are you? I'm, I'm um, my son. My mom. You're, son. You're, you're my yeah. son. No, What's your I'm name? my mom's son. Where's your mom my at? Mom. My mom's not here, sir. What's your name? How old are you? I don't you? even feel comfortable. How old are you? I, I need to find your girlfriend. <laughs> Now, I hate to ask, but I gotta ask it. If that was a white kid, do you think that they ever would have treated him that way? Because again, they came in there guns blazing. Well, not guns blazing. Luckily, not guns blazing. But they choked him out, right? 
And they were just absolutely certain that he had something to do with his girlfriend's disappearance, whatever that was. They didn't ask him where she is. They didn't mention her name. They didn't say anything about any of that. They just came in and they choked him out. And they were like, yeah, we got you, you little punk. We got you. Like, but no, what type of police work is that? You didn't question. You didn't really probe the situation. You broke the law in the process and you got no information out of it. So the whole thing was just like, what are these people's jobs? You know, is it to protect and serve or are they just thugs? Do they just do what they want? This video shows that oftentimes police officers are just thugs who do what they want. So this right here is exactly why police reform is so important, because this is incredibly common and it's been common, you know, especially within working class communities where people don't necessarily have the funds or resources to combat this type of behavior. It's so important for us to have police reform because we give these men and women, but majority men, we give them the authority to do things like this. We give them guns. We give them tasers. We give them an entire network, not only of other police officers, but municipal defense attorneys, municipal defense that keeps them out of trouble. This is why it's so important that we get police reform passed, because unless you have big dollars and big resources, this type of stuff is likely to happen to you. And it may be, you know, just because the police officers are having a bad day, but these men entered the home without a warrant and choked out a kid, two of them, two grown men choking out a child. Obviously, it wasn't necessary for them to do that, but they did it. Why? Because they could, and they figured, who's going to do anything about it? So a huge example of how police officers often uh, do abuse their authority that we talk about here all the time is civil asset forfeiture, which if you don't know, it's police officers' ability to seize cash, property, or assets if they believe it's connected to a crime or if they abuse the authority, if they just say that it is. So let's go over a little bit of that data. So since 2000, states and the Fed have collected over $68.8 billion worth of civil asset forfeiture. Now, that's only what's been recorded. So what's been collected is definitely more than that. And also data from 21 states shows that half of all currency forfeitures are worth less than $1,300, which, of course, is petty money. It's not any type of big criminal racket or criminal organization. And also it's much less than it would be to pay for an attorney to get those resources back which again shows the problem that half of the cash being taken is being taken from people who can't afford to defend themselves in court. And also forfeiture proceeds mostly go towards law enforcement budgets and not towards, you know, protecting the community or enhancing security in the community or giving the community projects. They just go back into money for the municipality. So that's another huge example of how authority can and often is abused. And this definitely absolutely ties into this video because it's all connected. All of it is connected.